Welcome to this video. Today I want to talk to you about a CPU cooling problem I had in one of my PCs and what I did to resolve it. Not too long ago I recommended a pre-built gaming PC off of Amazon which was built by CyberPower PC. The then price to performance was a great option for those looking for an alternative to building a PC. To be clear, I believe building a PC on your own is the best option, but I also recognize that some people find it intimidating and do not want to go that route. Now the overall internal components of that computer are a great deal, but one major caveat or area of concern was going to be the CPU cooler and I mentioned that in the initial recommendation. The computer only came with the standard Intel CPU cooler, which is not great. I knew it was going to be interesting to see how good or bad the Intel stock cooler would perform. One cooling concern I did not foresee was the case itself. Included with that computer was the Masterbox Lite 5 from Cooler Master. A quick internet search will show that while the case looks nice, it has terrible airflow and many people have voice concerns about it. Most of this is due to the flaw in the front panel design. It does not have enough vents and the vents it does have are not remotely large enough to let air or enough air into the computer. Additionally, the panel itself is too close to the intake fans and greatly inhibits and impedes airflow. Also, there are no vents on the top of the case, limiting it to one exhaust vent in the rear. It's clear that this case was designed for looks, not performance. Now, I did buy that CyberPower PC, and there are many performance reviews of that computer on my channel. Full playlist linked down below in the notes. The first time I noticed any major cooling issues was when I was doing a performance review of GTA 5 or Grand Theft Auto 5. Later, during the recording of CSGO, I noticed that the CPU temperature was climbing into the 90s, and before the 7 minute mark, temperatures had hit 100 degrees Celsius multiple times, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. In short, it was way too hot. However, if you continue to watch that video, you will notice that temperatures begin to come back down, and by timestamp 1608, temperatures were down into the 60s. So what happened? What changed? The answer? I took off the front panel during the middle of the recording. Let this be a testament to the importance of airflow in your computer and that with good airflow, one can still get good CPU temperatures even if they have low-end cheap CPU coolers. Now at this point, it was clear I was going to have to do something to come up with a permanent cooling solution and in a moment, I will tell you what solution I went with, but I also want to go over some additional options that are available. Now, of course, the first and most obvious option that is available that I've already touched on is take off the front panel. But this also presents some other uh, problems or reasons people are not going to like that solution. The first one being the fans are exposed, so then you have to worry about things coming into contact with the fans. More dust will get into the system. And the third one, the third concern about that option, possibly the biggest concern really, is that it doesn't look as good. People really do care about the looks of their computer. This leads to option number two, get a new case. And again, I also understand and recognize that option number two is not going to be popular for a lot of people, especially if you bought a pre-built computer, you bought it so that you didn't have to assemble it. And so buying a new case just sounds like a lot of work, intimidating, something you don't wanna do. But if you are open to that option, let me make a recommendation. Buy a case where the front panel is mesh and there's a vent on the top. Some great examples of this would be the H500 or H500P from Cooler Master. Those cases do cost more, so you could go with a cheaper option like the MB500, which is also from Cooler Master. You could go with an Eclipse P600S from Fantex. There, there are many other options out there. You can shop around. Fractal Design has a lot of great options. Bottom line, find something that has a front panel that's mesh and a vent on the top. Now, option number three is you can make adjustments or modifications to the case itself. Now, a lot of people have done this. There are no shortage of guides, photos, or videos of people making cuts or modifications to the front panel of that case. And you can definitely do that. It will solve the problem, but I personally don't like the look of it. I would actually go with a different option, and that would be moving the front intake fans from the outside of the case to the inside and lining it with a mesh-like material. And people have done that, and there's photos of that on the internet. What you have here is the fans are not exposed. You don't have to worry about dust. The only issue you may have with this is the looks, other than the work, maybe you know the work of actually making the modification. But the looks, if you can get past the looks, this is a great solution. 
You could even consider putting the panel back on in this configuration. The reason why is because you've now put more space between the fans and the panel. You still have to worry about those small vents, but you could still try it. If nothing else, you could take off the panel again and for sure would have a solution to the problem. Now, so far, all of those solutions I just mentioned were not the permanent solution that I went with. I went with number four, which is upgrades. Contacted Cooler Master to check to see if they had a front panel that was made of mesh that could be used to replace the current panel. And they said that they do not have one, but I did find photos on the internet of a Masterbox Lite 5 with a mesh front panel. So it looks like at one point they were at least considering it and either just didn't put it into production or I don't know what happened, but I cannot find this mesh panel for sale anywhere on the internet. What they will recommend is replacing the fans with more premium fans, both the intake and exhaust fan. Now that may help, especially with getting the hot air out of the case, but you're still gonna have a front intake problem because it's not the fans that are really the problem it's the panel itself and really cooler master they really should release a mesh front panel for this case there's definitely a market for it there's demand for it people would definitely buy it but they just haven't done that so the upgrade solution i went with was looking at an upgrade for the cpu cooler as i already mentioned it was just using the standard cheap intel cpu cooler which is not very good and so when I first started looking into the solution, I was looking at air coolers such as Noctua, which makes great air coolers. But because there's an airflow problem, I had concerns about that hot air still getting out of the case. So while the air cooler itself would be doing a great job because of the lack of airflow, that hot air may get trapped inside the case, or at the very least not exhausted as quickly as we would like. So I ended up going with a 120 millimeter liquid cooler from Corsair. I will link this cooler down below in the notes to the specific cooler. Now you don't have to go with this specific cooler, but let me explain why I did go with this one. A large part of it had to do with the fact that it's a more premium 120 millimeter liquid cooler, and it comes with two fans for a push-pull configuration. Keep in mind, we already have an airflow problem. I didn't want to make it worse by putting a radiator on the only exhaust vent and have that radiator inhibit airflow even more. With those two fans in a push-pull configuration, it makes sure that the air is getting through the radiator and out the back of the machine or out the back of the case. Now again, you don't have to go with this specific cooler. You can go with a cheaper cooler, but my recommendation is go with a more premium option because you're gonna have better results. Now the video up on the screen right now is footage of me playing CSGO with the liquid cooler installed and with the front panel on. And basically, long story short, temperatures are much lower it averages in about the 70s, and it will vary from game to game, but at least in this specific game, we're nowhere near 100 degrees Celsius anymore. We're down in the 70s, high 60s, low 70s. It kind of bobs up and down, but that's a huge, huge improvement. Now, I do want to be completely transparent and clear that, yes, installing this 120 millimeter liquid cooler from Corsair did solve the cooling problem with the CPU, but it also created a bit of a noise problem. And the reason why is we have an airflow problem. So in order to get enough air through that radiator, those fans have to work extra hard, which creates a lot of noise. And so it does work, but just keep that in mind. I just want you to be aware that if you go with this option, you may get a bit of a noise problem. And I know it's an airflow problem that's causing the noise because as soon as I take off that front panel, the cooler becomes very silent, very nice, very tolerable. The moment, the moment you put the front panel back on, it starts to make more noise because again, it has to speed up to get enough air through the radiator. At the very least, I hope listing off all of these options will at least get the wheels turning on possible solutions that you may use if you're dealing with these type of problems, whether with your CPU temperatures or with airflow. If you do have any suggestions, please post them down below in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please go ahead and consider sharing it. And please also consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications on future videos.